Good morning, how are you today? It's Tuesday, and we're walking through the book of Exodus. Are you enjoying this? I hope you are getting something out of it. Um, we're studying the exit, Exodus, of the Israelites from Egypt where they had been slaves for 400 years. Started out well, but then mm, got real bad. God then raised up Moses to bring the people out. Pharaoh wouldn't listen, so God began to send plagues to show Pharaoh, let my people go. But Pharaoh was one hard dude. Wouldn't listen. Nope. Then he tried to get them to compromise. Okay, you can celebrate, but stay in the land. No, we got to obey God. Okay, listen, you can leave, but don't go too far. No, we're going where God tells us. Okay, you can go, but leave, leave your herds here. Don't go like, like total commitment, like everything. So Egypt is a type or a symbol or a picture of the world. Sin, Satan, the world, lust of the flesh, pride of life, lust of the eye, covetousness, greed, envy, hate, prejudice, that's Egypt. And God says, I'm bringing you out of that. I got another land for you to live in, which is a type of the Christian life, which we're going to find. So now we learn that Passover night is the 10th plague, death to the firstborn. But the Israelites are saved as they stay in their house and put the blood on the door, over the door. Chapter 13, 1 through 16, the Lord said to Moses, consecrate to me every firstborn male. The first offspring of every womb among the Israelites belongs to me, whether human or animal. Then Moses said to the people, commemorate this day, the day you came out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. When we're in the world, we are slaves. We're yelling, we're free, but we are slaves. I'll do anything I want, you're a slave. Freedom means you're free to live the life God wants you to live, and only he can set you free, and that's the best life. <clears throat> so the more people say, I'm not a slave, I can do whatever I want. I don't want that Christianity, it's like a bondage to me. No, you got it wrong. That's the freedom. We're the slaves when we live in the world. Eat nothing containing yeast. Today in the month of Aviv, you are leaving. When the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Hivites, and Jebusites, the land he swore to your ancestors to give you, a land flowing with milk and honey. Milk and honey means that there was land good enough to graze cattle where they could get cows, and honey meaning that flowers be able to grow and bees and honey and all of that. I didn't do well in botany, so just trust me. You are to observe this ceremony in this month. For seven days eat bread made without yeast. On the seventh day hold a festival to the Lord. Eat unleavened bread during those seven days. Nothing with yeast in it is to be seen among you, nor shall any yeast be seen anywhere within your borders. On that day, tell your son, I do this because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. This observance will be for you like a sign on your hand and a reminder on your forehead that this law of the Lord is to be on your lips. For the Lord brought you out of Egypt with a mighty hand. You must keep this ordinance at the appointed time year after year. So every serious Jew during Passover time, March, April, they celebrate Passover. So let's just remember what it says here. The consecration of the firstborn, we're going to read more about. The firstborn sons that were born belonged to God in such a way that a special sacrifice had to be made for their life. An innocent lamb had to be sacrificed individually, separate from Passover. As you had a son, firstborn, you gave a lamb because God said, remember, I took, I, 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 I own them in a special way. Then the Bible tells us that they were celebrated with no yeast for seven days. So now I read it too quickly and I was troubled by it when I read it to you before. 
So I want to read it to you now from 1 Corinthians 5, verse 6. Your boasting is not good. Don't you know that a little yeast, yeast is the type of sin, leavens the whole batch of dough. In other words, if you let a little in the church and you tolerate it, it spreads. Oh no, the, the sold out Christians will, will take control of the one who's got the yeast in their life. No, the opposite. That's why you gotta be careful, church discipline, warning people, correcting them along with loving and encouraging them. So the Bible tells us that's the same way in our life. Enemy tells us, look, I don't want you to live like an animal. Just this little thing. I know your conscience says it's wrong. And I know you read that Bible verse that bothered you. You know it's wrong. But come on, come on. No one's perfect. That'll spread through your whole life and mine. A little leaven leavens the whole loaf. No, look, I just hate that guy. I'll never forgive him. But otherwise, I want to be like Jesus. It doesn't work that way. We got to be singing that song my wife wrote, I want to be holy like you, holy like you, Lord Jesus. So Paul says and goes on, get rid of the old yeast so that you may be a new unleavened batch with no yeast. He's likening their life and their church to a batch of dough as you really are. In other words, be who you are. He washed away all your sins. Now live that way. What are you going to do? Have your sins washed away and say, come on, sin. I want to live and grovel in that nastiness. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the festival, not with the old bread, leavened with malice and wickedness. That's like hate. You know, you hate. But I'm justified. You don't know why I hate. It's never justified because Jesus never hated. Well, I don't receive that. Look, what can I tell you? I only work here. I'm just reading you the Bible, and that goes from me too. Lots of people in my life I've wanted to hate, and the Lord has stopped me every time and said, no, you can't hate. Yeah, but you know, Lord, yeah, but you know I loved you when you've done 10 times worse to me. Keep the festival. That's the festival on leavened bread. Not with the old bread, leavened with malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I can't emphasize this enough. Passover comes first. Pardon of sin, salvation, visits your life, your home. You're born again. The Spirit comes to live in you. You, you know, when I see the blood, he passed over me. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. You sing about it. Andre Crouch's song, for it reaches to the highest mountain, flows to the lowest valley. You sing it. So Paul says, now that's good. The lamb has died. Now, remember the, what the Jewish feast was. It was a week long, seven being the number of completion and perfection. So now let's celebrate the feast. For how long? Rest of your life. How to celebrate it? Just like he told them, no leaven in the bread. No nasty attitudes. No lying. No stealing. No racism. No anything. Ask God every day to make you like Jesus. Stop justifying. Stop making excuses. Let's celebrate the feast with sincerity. No hypocrisy. Let's be real and truth. Like let's be who we are. You know, I was in the Naval Academy. That's what they said to me. You're a midshipman now. Act like you're, what your uniform signifies. Not act this way and then we'll give you the uniform. No, we're giving you the uniform. It's a privilege. Now live it out. Come on, today. Let's celebrate the feast. No leaven. Let's be kind, loving. Let's be like Jesus. So be it. Amen. Amen.